Hey, what's up, guys? This is Richie for Jailbreak Overlander. Welcome to another episode of Jailbreak Overlander. Today, I'm going to show you some of the items that I carry in my long-range INCH, I'm Never Coming Home, bug out bag. So, check this out. Again, you may modify this for your particular needs, your environment, the region of the country that you live in. But having a bag like this is a really good start. So check this out. not much difference between my kit and what everybody else carries so I've been asked I'm making the video here it is I carry a nylon sill tarp it's a waterproof tear resistant tarp works out well you can use it as a footprint you can use it for, works out well you can use it as a footprint or you can use this as a uh, well how about this as a tarp I don't have to explain it to you you know what I'm saying 511 gears 511 gear uh, bag with a really really good pair of binoculars in it it's worth the wait I have a two hawks war beast tomahawk this works out well because it does several different jobs it's also on a nice uh, leather drop loot it's incredibly sharp you can use this for self-defense or you can use this for prepping wood it works either way if you lose the handle, you can simply make another one, but this is really good hickory, so. For processing wood, you can e either use the Laplander, which is phenomenal, but I happen to carry the uh, Baco Laplander and a Pocket Boy as backup. This knife has been to the Smokies and the Rocky Mountains with me. Uh, this saw, I mean, and it's a beast. It blows through wood, no problem. So, uh, I have a mountain hardware sleeping bag inside this compression. It goes down to uh, minus 10 degrees. I have it in a compression bag, so it's pretty compact the way it sits now. In this Sea to Summit dry sack, I have a mountain hardware Tangent 2 Four Season tent. I'll leave a link. I've already got a video of this thing set up. It's a little bit heavy, but it's a good pack. It's a good bag. Uh, it's a good tent. I'm sorry. For cooking, boiling water, I carry this uh, this canteen. I got this from Dave Canterbury's site, and it works out really, really well. Comes apart. You can use this to make a fire underneath. Comes with a bowl which works out really well. It, it's all very functional. It's all been tested in real life. And inside the canteen, I carry a Sawyer water filter and two Sawyer bags, one for dirty water, one for water after it's been processed. So this is for cooking and drinking water. Uh, hand warmers. I've got a big as big Agnes uh, blow up sleeping pad. This thing adds a little bit of weight, hogs a little space, but if you can ruck it, fuck it. Again, redundancy. I have two Sawyer water filters in here with a tool to clean it out in case it gets clogged, as well as three more uh, bags. Two, uh, I think Camelback or whatever they're called. Nine hour emergency candles and the candle lantern holder. This thing works phenomenal. This will heat up a tent, it will heat up a broke down vehicle. 
I keep it in this little foam capsule because it keeps it from getting damaged. Carry as many of these bad Larrys as you can. And that will set you right up. As many as you can carry. You know what I'm saying? Because why not? If all hell has broken loose, you at least don't want to be in the dark. Carry aluminum foil. And I also carry these little casserole baking dishes. They take up no space at all. You can open it up, you can gather water, you can cook in it, all sorts of things. Aluminum, when the shit has hit the fan, aluminum is going to be worth its weight in silver. Besides my sleeping bag, I carry a high-end uh, Adventure Medical Kit Bivy in case I run into something. Somebody that needs help, whatever, who knows. Shit has hit the fan, so who knows. If you can rock it, fuck it. Wilderness first aid, in case the adrenaline's pumping and you forget what you're doing, refer. Map of my area, topographical, waterproof. Extra knife besides the one I'm already carrying. Let me see here. I have a Gerber folding entrenchment tool. This is a good one. I paid extra money for it for a reason. And I also have a You Dig It small cat hole tool made in America. And again, if you can ruck it, fuck it. It's all about weight. I carry a sewing kit. And you might as well, I got a couple of X-Acto uh, surgical blades in there, nail clippers, and I carry an additional small sewing kit. Redundancy. Quick clot. Figure it out, learn how to use it, it will save your life. Another emergency blanket. It's, this is an adventure medical kit. It's, it's a larger one, so... Let's see, what else do we have here? Goal zero. It's a solar panel. This will keep my double A's recharged, my triple A's recharged, the adapter. This will charge all sorts of things because carrying a flashlight is great, but if you can't recharge it, that's not so great. You know what I'm saying? 100 bucks could mean the difference between life and death. Who knows? I carry one. This is my fire kit. I have hundreds of waterproof matches, survival setups, and numerous ways to start a fire. Emergency candle, ferrocium rod. I even got the Bear Gorillas uh, fire starter. Someone gave that to me, so laugh if you want, but it works better than anything else I have, so I carry it. And I carry it in a waterproof bag completely. Magnesium, too, you never know. Five fifty cord, five fifty cord, bank line, five fifty cord. A safety flare made for a water uh, for a motorboat. These could save your life. At least carry one and make sure it works. Don't test it. Make sure it works though. <clears throat> so laser bright. These are military grade. Uh, Glow sticks, they run on numerous batteries, but these things last for several hundred hours, so they're good to have. They're expensive, though. These are 80 bucks. A Sharpie. Write in the rain, at least one or two. You never know when you need to write a note or write down directions. Fishing leaders. You can use these to make snares. You can use these for a lot of things. They don't take up any weight at all, you know what I mean? So you know what's going on. This is a dynamo. Solar. The solar is pretty much useless, but uh, radio, all sorts of different things on this. It's an emergency gig, you know what I'm saying. Bandanas, REI microfiber towels. I have larger versions of these as well. These things work. They're good to have. This is a large tarp. A large tarp. I don't have to take the tent with me. It's one or the other, but it's winter time, so I'm taking them both. There's pegs in here and rods. Sam Splint, part of your first aid. Carry this thing. It could save your life. Toilet paper, small deodorant, toothbrush, moleskin, stuff to wipe your bum with, because when you're in the woods, you do not want to learn how to wipe your bum with a pine cone. Bring toilet paper. Wipe your bum. First aid kit has a trauma kit, quick clot, and everything you would possibly need at least three or four times. 
Tylenol, allergy, and anti-diarrhea. Make sure you carry that stuff. Make your own first aid kit. Maybe I'll do a video on this. It depends. I'm not sure yet. Small, best glide fishing survival kit. This will work. And this is a best glide military scout pocket survival tin. There's a lot of crap in here. Just in case everything goes wrong and this is all you're carrying. It's absolutely better than nothing. Israeli bandage. Carry them. Use them. And a Thompson snare kit. These are definitely good to have. Batteries, 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 and lights. Surefire, surefire, surefire. And batteries that can be recharged. Re if you can't recharge it, the flashlight's only good for as long as the batteries last. Flashlights. Everyone knows that. Multi-tool. Don't skimp on a multi-tool. You don't want to be... Uh, going to use the multi-tool and it simply breaks on you. That would suck. Leatherman or an SOG or a, or a, a GURB. A GURB is not bad, but double check it. Make sure it's... You're paying 60 bucks for one, unless you score one online for 40 or 50. Don't skimp on the multi-tool. All right, I got to take my camera with me here. Flashlights, flashlights, flashlights. Food. I got a couple of MREs stripped down. I have a little bowl to eat out of my spork. I carry one of these just in case. Dried food, freeze dried food. Enough for a few days, a couple of things, you know, energy bars, whatnot. This is my clothing that I carry. A pair of ultralight, triple light design pants. I have wool socks and silk liners for my wool socks to keep your feet happy. I carry two pairs of wool socks. I carry those uh, ex officio underwear because you can go three or four weeks with one pair, which is awesome and merino wool undergarments and always be aware of what you're wearing on the way out of the house it could be the last time you ever change you know what i mean uh these are the walking sticks i bring walking sticks because they're small and i can strap them to my pack so the next part of this video you're going to see all this stuff jammed inside all these bags and they'll be either either in this uh terminator f4 bag or this uh mystery ranch filbe setup I'm not exactly sure. They say, they say that you can go three minutes without air, three days without water, three weeks without food, but you can't go three seconds without hope. So square yourself away as soon as you can, the sooner the better. This is all just the extra crap I had laying around. I'm not gonna show weapons in this video because, well, just because. If you can't figure that one out on your own, I don't know what to tell you. Carry cigarettes, carry whiskey, those are good things to trade. Gold, just be aware of who you're trading with, use your own best judgment, but in a world without a rule of law, there's not going to be any law. So, next time you see all this crap, it will be bagged up and inside one of those packs and ready to go on my back. This is a mystery ranch, phenomenal United States made harness. And this is a FILB bag in the back. It's got some weight to it. It's probably clocking 60 pounds, but that would be because of that ginormous tent. Okay. Patch it on the side, easy to get to. Everything I may want to get to for whatever reason is in the top see-through. Got my maps in the top you dig and first aid also I got a couple of glow sticks hand washers uh, hand sanitizers my bad and I got a wool, wool, wool cap and my fire kit is in the top because when I get to a spot the first thing I want to do basically is drop my pack and start making a fire so those are my priorities yours may be different you know what I mean? You may want to drop your pack and uh, start digging a hole to make a swimming pool. I don't know. People are different. That's why it's America, the melting pot. It would appear the pot is now on fire. All right, so what I do is instead of throwing everything in, I put them in hiking packs. There's the uh, REI 
microfiber. This is an enormous tarp. And I'm thinking I might shit can the, uh, the Four Season tent because it's just a little bit too much weight. It doesn't make sense. I don't need both. So that's a huge uh, sill tarp right there, waterproof. For the most part, tear resistant. This is just a bunch of odds and ends. This is the first aid shit, stuff like that. I hope I'm in, I hope I'm in, uh, in view on that camera. I don't make these videos because I have a complex and I need people's approval. I see, uh, I don't know. I don't even know how to explain it. I do this because what else is there to do in this country? If you protest, they stick you in a free speech zone. And if you walk around day to day, it's just amazing how stupid people are. Who are you voting for? What the fuck difference does it make? Seriously, what difference does it make? I sound like Hillary, don't I? You know, it's just unbelievable. It's not unbelievable. So I make videos, try to wake people up. I don't know. All they seem to do is make me look like an idiot to everyone I ever know, because now I'm a truther. Blows me away. Sam Splint, you already saw that. I keep these on the top. These are really well-made gloves. Uh, they're made in the United States. They're kind of sap gloves, but these are really good quality leather gloves, and they actually fit like a, like a glove. Not OJ's gloves, but like a glove. So I've got everything nice and packed in here, and I have it packed in in a way so that I can get at it easily. You gotta make a bag, you wanna carry extra waterproof bags. Waterproof is everything. Having a bag full of water is like having a bag full of suck. Nobody wants that. And these are good for your uh, food at nighttime too if you're in a bear uh, infested area or bears are known to be around. You're gonna wanna learn how to tie these up and throw them up in the tree. My water filter. This was food and such. I normally mark it as you can see. I mark them, put down what year it is and everything, because I use this crap a lot. Uh, again, my stripped down MRE. This is first aid. Candle. Saw. Trowel. My clothes. Now these are for when everything goes wrong because the clothes I'm wearing will last me several days. I just happen to dress like that. This is uh, clean up stuff. You want to keep yourself clean if you can. Here's that ginormous tent. Doesn't seem to weigh that much, but again, it's a, it's a uh, mountain hardware tent, so it's got some weight to it naturally. That's basically it, besides my sleeping bag. Uh, I got my canteen on the side. I got my tent poles on the side as well. There's an inside pocket you can hang a uh, camelback bladder. But I'm gonna think of something different. I may carry my two canteens and this extra, and this extra stainless bottle, which also has a ferrocium rod, aluminum foil inside it, as well as two Sawyer water filters. So this on its own is a decent little survival kit. If it's better than nothing, you know what I mean? I can boil water and I can start a fire and there's a glow stick in here. If all else fails, it's better than just my wallet and a knife. But because it's winter time, if it gets ugly around here, a camelback's just going to freeze on me. I'm going to have a bag of frozen water, and it's going to rip, and it's going to suck. Once again, we get back to a bag of suck. I am carrying two of these bad Larrys. I'm not sure if I need all that weight. But it's well worth it when you have no batteries left. If it's going to be a while. If everything goes horribly wrong and you have to bug out, you're going to want to bug out and stay out of sight for a while. You want to sustain yourself for a couple, three, five days till everything cools down. And then you can start sneaking out like a raccoon and seeing if you can rummage through somebody's shit. You know what I mean? Again, cigarettes, whiskey, weed. Those are all things you can trade. You don't want to be giving up your gold to somebody, you know, for, for something to eat, giving them an ounce of gold. But I mean, I bet your cigarettes would be good to go because stores are going to be looted and trashed. We've already seen how people act on Black Friday. Black Friday, all hell breaks loose. Imagine, imagine 
Imagine the day they decide to press the button and shut EBT cards off. That third of the population, the third of the population of the United States is going to go after the other two thirds. And I am, I'm really sure the cops are, and everyone's just going to stand down and let, they're going to let the protesters vent and watch us tear each other to pieces. Now, some of the video I just showed you was made in the wintertime. Now that it's summertime or spring, the weather's warmer. You need to go through your bug out bag, your INCH bag, or your emergency kit and make sure you make the necessary changes. Change up to lighter clothing, but still durable clothing, and you might want to double up on your capacity to carry water. If anybody out there wants to buy a pre made bug out bag like the ones that I show in the video, I use only the best stuff available. A couple of the subscribers have already got them. I've made several for my Facebook community. But if you want one and you're serious, you're looking at between $2,000 and $3,500, soup to nuts. And then I deliver the bag to you no matter where you live. If you're in Texas, I'm coming. So if you're serious about it and you really want to have a bag set up for yourself, for your family, for your kids, send me a message. I'll leave my email in the description and I'll get one started for you. It's pretty, pretty much easy to do. It takes me about a month altogether. I can put something together quicker, but it depends. Anyways, guys, Richie from Boston. Watch your six, and I am out.